Hello, my dear students. A very good morning to all of you. I welcome you all to my class. So, my dear students, I have started fourth chapter that is disaster management. And in my previous video, I have explained about the different types of disasters. So, now if you remember, there are two types of disasters that is natural disaster and man-made disasters. And in, uh, in our previous video, I have explained about the different types of disasters like natural disasters like earthquake, storms, forest fires, etc. Alright, and in uh, today's uh, class also, I am going to continue the same chapter and I want all of you to pay attention. Now... Uh, if you remember students, in our previous class, I have given you the definition of disaster and your homework was to write the definition of disaster. Alright, so now today we are going to learn about disaster management. So I will read this definition and then I will explain what is disaster management. Okay, so community participation and disaster management are closely related taking steps to prevent disasters making plans to face disasters and developing the capacity for that is called disaster management to prevent or reduce damage caused by natural or man-made disasters emergency planning and management is required so what is explained over here is that there should be community participation and disaster management. Alright. So, they both are closely related. For example, if you want to avoid okay, a disaster, so you have to take some steps. For example, during rainy season, there are flood-like situations. So, can we prevent floods from occurring? Alright. If we can, then we should take some measures we should take some steps what kind of steps can be taken the people who are living near the uh, rivers okay so these people should be informed beforehand okay that the flood may occur all right so that they can move from that place and they can go to some safer place so that is one preventive measure that can be taken during flood so just like that in any uh, you can say any kind of disaster if the people are informed beforehand then they should be informed so that you can say uh, that step is taken by the meteorological department where the weather forecast is done so from the meteorological department we get all the weather related information so we understand whether a storm is going to come or the uh, heavy rains is going to be there. So all these necessary information we get from the meteorological department. That is one kind of the preventive measure. Alright. So taking steps to prevent disasters, making plans to face disasters. So if the uh, disaster has already taken place, then what we should do, for example, if there is a forest fire and the forest is burning. So what steps should be taken? Okay. There should be uh, you can say some ways by which these forest fires can be controlled. So, the step, steps should be taken. Alright. And developing the capacity for that is called disaster management. So, in each and every kind of disaster, there are different ways to handle that kind of disaster. Alright. To prevent or reduce damage caused by natural or man-made disaster. So, sometimes the damage that is caused by a particular disaster is tremendous all right for example during earthquakes many people die and they get buried uh, into like you can say buildings or uh, they uh, they are like many people they die okay because of earthquakes so how their lives can be saved it's a major disaster all right so how the damage can be reduced so all these steps are studied during disaster management right so emergency planning and management is required 
so i hope all of you have understood what is disaster management disaster management is nothing but the steps that are taken during a disaster to save the lives of people and to reduce the damage being done during that disaster i hope you all have understood this now always remember during a disaster helping and supporting each other is a moral responsibility so this my dear students you have to understand that it is a moral responsibility to save people during a disaster to support each other you should not run away from a situation you should always try to help each other okay so whatever help that you can give to others you should give now institutes at work so the national management authority was established in 2005 it undertakes planning and implementation of disaster management at work so it is the institutes at work so this institute was established in 2005 it is called as the national management authority and the work of the uh, national management authority is to undertake the planning and implementation of disaster management so i hope you all have understood this now we will talk about the remedial and preventive measures okay so what we should do during a disaster so first thing is keep watching television and radio news and bulletins okay so this is the first thing that we can do during a disaster so you should watch television and you should listen to the radio and news bulletins so you will get an idea that uh, what kind of disaster is has taken place and how much damage has been done and how you can save your life and life of others so that information we get from the television all right then use battery operated ra radios and mobiles so you should always keep battery operated radios and mobiles with you then heed the warnings issued by the meteorological department carefully so it is very important that you uh, listen to the warnings which are given by the meteorological department you should pay attention to that so sometimes we get a strict uh, you can say uh, uh, you can say instructions by the meteorological department that there will be heavy rains or there will be storms or cyclones in a particular area so you should not go uh, near to the sea shore so we should always listen to these instructions given by the meteorological department because it is going to help us in saving our lives then use the website www.imd.gov.in so it is about the uh, imd okay so www.imd.gov.in so this is the meteorological department so they give us all the instructions so if you just click on that you will get the idea about this website okay and i want all of you to open the website and see for yourself okay what kind of information is given over there then landslides occur in hilly areas due to cloud burst or heavy rains on such occasions do not take shelter at the foot of a hill okay so see it is very important that during landslides in hilly areas you should not take shelter at the foot of a hill okay so there are chances of landslides and there are chances that people may get killed during the landslides so therefore it is very necessary that you take shelter at a very safer place all right so that's it now let's see remedial and preventive measures during floods so during floods do not linger in houses or areas on river banks seek shelter in other safe places so during floods as i have explained before also that we should not take shelter near the river banks because the river banks may overflow during floods okay and there are chances that people may lose their lives okay so they should seek shelter in other safe places move to safer place at a greater height 
so do not step into the water currents or drive a vehicle into them okay so you should take necessary precautions during floods so during an earthquake roads split open the ground cracks railway tracks get uprooted hence when moving from one place to another ensure that the road is safe further on so during an earthquake we should take even you can say necessary uh, precautions so during earthquake what happens roads it splits open the ground it cracks okay and railway tracks get uprooted so if you are traveling then you should make sure that the road is safe ahead all right then that was about earthquakes then take shelter in relief camps as they provide medicines food packets drinking water first aid etc so during any kind of disaster whether it is an earthquake or whether it is um you can say floods all right so what we should do we should take shelter in relief camps so during all these disasters the government they make safer places they make the relief camps where the people they can get free food and they can get medicine and drinking water and all the you can say facilities so we should take shelter in relief camps if we have lost our homes then we get protection from fire uh, to get protection from fire use fire extinguishers in public places like schools hospitals railway stations etc okay so to get protection from fire we should use fire extinguisher okay in public places like schools so in all the public places you will see that the fire extinguisher is always there it is for the safety purpose all right so that was about the remedial and preventive measures my dear students so now let's see what we are going to learn now we are going to learn about a very interesting and a very important uh, thing it is about the first aid box so my dear students it is very important that we all keep a first aid box at home so see we don't know that when the accident is going to happen maybe you are walking on the road and you fell down and you get a you get hurt and there is a wound or a cut so when you come back home you should have the first aid box ready so that you can apply some ointments or creams and you can use the bandage okay to cover the wound so all these things should be there at home so here in the picture uh, it is shown that what things should be kept in the first aid box all right so first there should be a bandage okay then we should have an antiseptic cream then we should keep a scissor we should keep a thermometer all right we can use the plasters okay then uh, we should use uh, and this um, detol we can keep inside there is a book they are saying that we should use the accident book so in that accident book in the manual it is explained that you know how what kind of steps you can take you know in different situations so that book is also available and that should also be kept in the first aid box so that was about the first aid box my dear students and i want to give you this activity okay you have to make your first aid box all right and you can click a picture of your first aid box what you have kept inside the first aid box and you can send it on my whatsapp all right so that is one activity i am giving you all okay so that was about the first aid box i hope you all have understood so now the next is first aid so first aid means the first help so when you get you know some minor injuries are there that can be uh, you can say you can uh, take all the uh, you can say you can apply medicine and everything precautions that if you can take at home then what is that you can do so it is about the first aid so it is in day to day life sometimes we have to face disasters 
or accidents or of varying proportions on such occasions it is necessary to give some immediate aid even before medical treatment becomes available okay so for example if there is a dog bite okay then what we can do after coming home we should first clean the wound all right and then we should apply some ointment cover that area and then you can rush to the hospital okay to take further medical help so some uh, you can say help you can get at home so that is uh, you can say that help you can get from the first aid box and that is why it is very important to keep the first aid box at home all right so that's it in today's uh, class my dear students now your homework is to write down about uh, the disaster management so you have to write the definition of disaster management in your notebook so that's it in today's class my dear students we will meet in our next class and have a nice day to all of you